What's up everybody, welcome to my new video. Today we are working with vectors. Learning about them and what they are, as far as I know, they look like arrays. I was going to say dictionaries because of the brackets. You know, arrays are usually with square brackets. But, you know, dictionaries have an assigned string to the value. Right here, it's just the values. So yeah, still learning about them. So we got, let's see, initial, initial, initializing a vector. So that's how we do it. What type of vector? You can only put one type. So right here to doubles. But I believe doubles, doubles ha encompasses integers and and um, decimals. I think. Not sure. All right. So here we have. Let's see. For example, instead of just creating a double vector named the location, so this is how it's done here. You can initialize it. Okay, that's just the only difference. We can create and initialize location with specific values. Here we're storing a longitude and latitude. For those of you that don't know what what that is is basically like your place on earth it's like a system of it's like a grid an earth grid you can go to wikipedia and just look up latitude and longitude uh let's see so it would uh look something like this so is that mine or because <laughs> you know some of these websites they be getting your location and they just put information on it. Alright, so we know it's not here. Anyways, suppose we want to create and initialize a vector with two elements. However, we didn't want, we didn't know what values we want to add yet. So, here we have two. So we have two empties. Here we're creating a double vector and setting the initial size to using parentheses. So just be, yeah, they're just empty. Suppose that the subway costs are as follows. Adult, 800, child, 400 for 24 hours. We have initialized subway adults. Where is it, right here? Initialized subway child vector with these concepts here. All right, so it's already here. All we gotta do is just kind of do this here, copy this right here, boom, and it's just, I'm guessing just half the price, so for this one, 600 and 750, run that, should work, there it is, nothing's printing now, I don't know why I was waiting on something to print out, for those of you wondering, this is my name in Morse code, Part of a part of a challenge for pr a, a practice exercise for my class. What else? Now that we have a vector, how do we access an individual element? An index refers to an element's position. For example, suppose we have a character vector, just like that. So the vowels zero, one, two, three, four. The output would be, yeah, so it's just like arrays. You got vowels, yeah, just like arrays, but they call them vectors. I think there's also a different way to create arrays. I'm not too sure, though, but I think, I vaguely remember uh, a way to create arrays without using this. So I don't know, I don't know how it's done, but we move. So... That's one way to do it. What do we need to do? What is the element? What number at index to find a way? Find out the answer by outputting. Okay, let's see. At index two, so that'll be the third element. Seven fifty. So how are we gonna do it? STDCL. We're just gonna say subway. 
child, and then we're going to have the square brackets, two. Am I going to do end of the line? I don't know, I don't think I wanted it, but we're going to do it anyways. Uh, let's just go ahead and do this here. What I think it's asking a, I, I think I have to use std colon colon before the handle. Alright, so now we're going to remove an element. Pushback. Is that what I think it is? Is that, yeah, it's DNA. I was like, yeah. these letters seem familiar. That's in, I think that's in biology class. I had a biology class for, right here at Chafee, for like two, two, three weeks, a week maybe, I don't remember. I had to drop out of it. Okay, so push back. Okay, push back. So we'll go, so GT, pop, remove elements. It would only pop one, huh? Every time you call it, it pops one. Very, very, very similar to JavaScript. Let's see, inside the code editor, we have a SCD string. Add these four strings. We have four strings. What am I supposed to do here? Oh, it's just gonna print it out. Okay, let's do, add these four strings using pushback. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do last Jedi. Push back. Um, I think it goes in here. Yeah, it goes in there. And of course, our semicolon. This is going to be our little template. We're going to add four of them. So we got Kylo. So this is the latest. Star Wars here. Luke. And Finn. Run it. No. Push back. Did I spell it wrong or something? Inside the code editor, we have a std string. Do I have to use std or no? Do I have to create it? What's going on? I think. I need to create it. Let me see. Four. Hold on. Let me let me copy this here. We'll go back one time. There was a spot where I was talking about how to create. Initialize. Here it is. Initialize. Initialize to location. Oh, saved it. I didn't think I was gonna save it. Alright, so let's run it one more time. Let's see what the errors are. Ant main. It wants to return an ant. We're not really looking to return anything. But, let's say return. Do I need string or something? I may need it. Pushback. That's what's. That's literally what's on there right now. Did I spell it? Oh, of course. Did you add those elements using pushback? Yes, I did. Maybe it just doesn't want this here. There it is. So if you're gonna use pushback, you don't have to. You don't have to already have, you can just have an empty string, so you probably don't even need this, you don't. Okay, well that's easier than I thought. That's it for today, thank you guys for watching, you have a good ass day, peace out.